We're using our Faber-Castell colored pencils in our tutorial today, and we'll be doing it all in real time. Absolutely nothing sped up, so stick around. Hey there colorists, welcome to Pencil Stash, a weekly show all about coloring. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit that like button if you're enjoying my videos. Today I'm digging into the pencil stash, literally, and pulling out my Faber-Castell colored pencil set. Uh, to be honest, I don't use the oil-based colored pencils often enough as I'm much more familiar and much more comfortable using the wax-based pencils such as my beloved Prismacolor Premiers. Uh, but I'd like to change that and use these Faber-Castell Polychromis set more. Especially because they are so pretty and so easy to sharpen to a nice fine point. Uh, and I'll also be using my color chart to make it easier to choose my colors as well. To give them a whirl, we'll use a page from this Posh series coloring book called Pretty Designs. And I like this type of coloring book for trying out new pencils, new techniques, uh, because these pages are nice and small, with great designs, both simple and intricate, which is great for coloring and for testing. And let's use this peony page. Peonies are one of my favorite flowers, uh, plus these little babies will be really fun to color. And we're just going to do one of these peonies today, but it'll be all in real time so that you can see what I'm doing every step of the way. None of the video will be sped up. So let's get started. And just real quick, I've decided to tear the page out of the book because it wasn't lying flat because it was at the very, very end of the book. Um, instead of struggling with it the whole time, I just ripped it right out and uh, cut the edge off just to make a nice straight line. And I'm also placing it on this thick, high quality piece of paper only because this coloring page is pretty thin and it'll pick up the texture of the wood on my desk here uh, if I don't have something behind it, which would be a real bummer. I'm going to be using colors in the pink range, and I've already pulled some using that color chart I mentioned earlier, and I'll start with a color called Matter. This will be the second to darkest color that I've pulled, and I'm placing this down in a few strategic places, starting with what I'll refer to as the base of each petal, which may just be the lowest point of each petal that we see, uh, since the one in front of it would likely be causing a bit of shadow onto the interior of that kind of petal behind it. A bit along the top and the side edge of this petal, just to give the illusion of some curl or some dimension. And I'll also be putting in some textural lines from the base of some of my petals as well as some of the tops. Uh, since if you look closely at the leaves of a peony, uh, they have a kind of a vertical line type of texture on each petal. So these darker lines here kind of give the illusion of, of the depth that would be, be between those lines. Even if it's super tiny, you'd still see you know, some of the shadow that those lines cause. And if you aren't familiar with the subject that you're coloring, I strongly encourage you to use a reference photo whenever possible. This gives you lots of cues on color, color placement, and also where a particular object might be shaded. You can simply type the word peony or whatever your subject is right into your Google search bar, and it'll pull tons of pictures for you to reference. And the best part is that it is free and you can keep that image up and available to you the whole time you're coloring. And just keep in mind what I'm doing here is very preliminary. 
I like to put in a bit of color in certain areas, uh, kind of kind of right off the bat. Um, and then I'm not only going to build upon them with other colors, but I'm also going to come back to these areas later on, maybe with the same color, and continue to refine it and refine it until I'm happy with my image. And I think that's the hardest thing about doing tutorials is that while you're doing them, you're not quite done with an area, but you kind of move on to something else with the intention of coming back later because that's just kind of the natural way that you draw or you color, uh, you know, whatever you're teaching. So, so teaching isn't quite something you can necessarily do in a very linear fashion. It's not just, now I use this color and I'm done with it. Now I use that color and now I'm done with it. You know, I tend to go back and forth you know, quite a bit and I just continue to build and continue to refine. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go. And I'm also really, really glad that you guys are here with me and that you're enjoying my videos. Right now it's October of 2017 and I posted my very first coloring tutorial to YouTube a year ago this month. And it was kind of on a dare from my daughter. Um, and so I just, I can't believe that it's actually been that long. It's been a whole year, but 55 videos and almost 7,500 subscribers later. And I'm truly in awe of what we've been able to accomplish together in just a short year. So real quick, I just want to say a very, very heartfelt thank you for sticking with me and riding along with me on this journey. It's been lots and lots of fun, and I know it'll continue to be lots of fun for a long time to come. And remember, as you're doing this, you know, even though you're only putting one color down at the moment and the area adjacent to it is just kind of plain paper for, for right now, still try to feather the pressure down to the bare minimum of pressure along those kind of outer edges where your color will meet up with either paper or a different color later on, as this will make it a lot easier to blend later and you'll avoid those harsh lines in between your colors. All right, let's switch gears now and go to our darkest color, our red violet. We'll use this very sparingly as it's a deep, dark, bold color, but it'll give us just the depth that we need to really drive home the notion that this is a real flower with three real dimensions and weight. Again, following those same areas we already covered with our matter pink color, but just not making the same kind of full line weight as the thick. We're just complementing the matter so that our shadows are kind of twofold instead of just flat with one color. More is not always better, but in this instance, more is better. I like this page too, as the artist gave us some nice dark lines to follow. Some of those interior petals that were kind of already darkened for us. So we're just using those as references and kind of building upon those. While I do this, I'm just gonna go back and talk a little bit about the Faber-Castell polychromous pencils I'm using here. Like I said, I don't use these kind of as much as I should. They have a bit of a firmer feel than the Prismacolors. Um, the Prismacolors feel much softer, um, the color more kind of pliable on the page. Um, and that's not necessarily a better thing. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, it's just that it kind of takes a little bit different techniques to kind of master these sort of firmer oil-based pencils. Um, and the color that you get from these polychromists is just beautiful. Even when I open the box, I'm still just like, holy cow, they're so pretty. Um, I also only have the set of 60 Faber-Castell polychromists, where I have the full set of 150 of the Prismacolor premieres. Um, so I have a lot more kind of at my disposal with those Prismacolors, which is why I might tend to use them a little bit more. Um, and just, you know, this is just another instance, you know, 
more is kind of better when you're coloring just to have a little bit more um, variation or kind of options at your disposal. But uh, that's not to say that I couldn't get uh, some open stock of these Faber-Castells. I just might have to add to this set of 60. I'm really, really liking these. And the more that I use them and kind of refine my skills, you know, the better that I'll get with these. So maybe now is the time. And, uh, and by the way, tell me down in the comments what your favorite pencils are to use and why you prefer using those to some other brands. Dark colors are done, for now at least, and we are going to go to our lightest color, which is cream. And I'll hold my pencil a bit further up the shaft and kind of on an angle so that I'm brushing the paper with the side of the pencil core instead of just the pencil tip. And I'll place down the color in some kind of central areas on each petal, and I can go a bit wider than I think I'll ultimately kind of end up uh, with being cream, as this cream is kind of a great base layer to build upon with the other colors I'll be using too. So the cream area might shrink a little bit, but it'll be a great kind of foundational layer beneath uh, some of the other ones that we'll be putting down. Onto one of my favorite colors in the Faber-Castell arsenal, Medium Flesh. It's a lovely pinky peach color, and this will kind of act as the majority of our peony color. So with very light pressure, I'll just go in and start connecting all of my dark colors with all of my light colors with this medium flesh. And this is where blending really comes into play. And if you feathered out your previous colors, like we kind of talked about, uh, blending at this stage will be a lot easier. We'll also be doing an additional blending technique at the end too, so don't worry if you don't have it quite as blended as you'd like at this stage, because there's lots more to come. And again, I like to use cream, especially against pinks and purples in my flowers, as it really gives it a nice variation of color. If you look at flowers, they aren't just all one color. Nothing rarely is ever just one color. Um, nothing's ever even just multiple tones of the same color. There's usually a lot of color variation in there, especially on flowers. And cream really warms up a color palette for me. And I also really like to use um, either cream or, or kind of a light peach. Um, but that light peach, um, unfortunately, is not in my set of Faber-Castell uh, set of 60. So in this instance, cream will work just fine. Onto this beautiful rose carmine color, which is the first color I decided to use while looking at my color chart. So this color was kind of the jumping off point for all the other colors that I chose. So we'll use this color to kind of bridge the gap just a bit more between our medium flesh and our matter color. 
using this to just kind of make a little bit better of a blend, a little bit more of a gradient uh, where I might be missing just a little bit there. And I'll be using very light pressure in kind of circular or kind of orbital strokes to feather and push around all of these colors to create a smoother transition. Back in with matter briefly, just to touch up some areas. And this is what I meant by sometimes that just because I've moved on from a color doesn't mean that I won't come back to it later. Um, so just kind of cleaning up some of these areas that maybe should get a bit more shadow before we move on to our final layer. Okay, that's pretty much all the color we'll put down, but we are not done. Now we're gonna be using our white pencil, and we will use this to blend with. And you've seen me use the Prismacolor colorless blending pencil before in countless tutorials, but if you didn't know this, you can also use your white pencil to blend with. And uh, your white obviously is not colorless. It does add a bit of that kind of white, milky hue uh, to your work, but in this instance, that's actually exactly what I'm hoping for. It'll give our peony a really nice, soft, feminine look. And what I'm doing is just pushing this color around, really taking away any of those harsh lines. You'll kind of push and pull the color as your pencil strokes move. So just be careful that you're pushing and pulling in the direction that you want the color to go. Um, kind of in this instance of maybe this, uh, these, uh, these textural lines um, up and down the petals, uh, you may want to blend in a vertical stroke, the same that you put down the original color with, just so that it pushes the color upwards and downwards instead of sideways, so that the line weight of your strokes stays the same. You, know, you don't want to kind of thicken those lines by uh, blending um, in, in side strokes. And if you don't want to push too much of your dark colors into your light colors, push and pull from your lights towards your darks and not the other way around. This will kind of maintain the integrity of your light colors from getting a little bit muddied. And 
there you have it folks, our finished peony using Faber-Castell Polychromis color pencils. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please hit that like button. It helps new folks find my channel. And if you would like to see more from me, hit one of the jump videos in the end card or visit my channel for lots more tutorial coloring videos. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you all next time.